Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, in today's video, we are finally going to be adding some fish to that Hyger 8 gallon aquarium we set up a few weeks ago. If you haven't watched the unboxing and setup video on that tank, I would highly recommend checking out that video first. That will kind of prep you for this video where we actually add the fish. Now, the tank is only 8 gallons, but I did have some types of fish in mind that I wanted to get. However, first of all, let's head over to a fish store, check out some of our options, figure out what's going to work what isn't gonna work, and then I'm gonna come back here and show you exactly what I got. So first off, let's go check out some of our options. Now picking out fish can truly be overwhelming sometimes with so many different types, colors, and temperaments of fish. There's so much to choose from so it can get overwhelming. But today I wanna show you a couple of my top picks for a nano aquarium, specifically this eight gallon tank we have here with us today. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the first fish that generally catch people's attention, beginners or not, is the glowfish. These guys are super cool looking. They are a little bit big, at least the glow tetras are. However, we could definitely fit a few in the tank if we wanted to. They are a little bit spendy and I have glowfish already. So I don't think I'm looking at these guys today, but they are great for beginners. Now over here we have some of our smaller tropical fish. These consist of some mollies, some sword tails, and some platies. There's also some pearl daniels we'll see in a second. These are great beginner fish. They're super hardy. They don't grow too big. They max out around two inches, so they're perfect for this size aquarium. Um, those garamis, however, will get a little bit too big, so we're gonna pass on those. Next up, these fish will all pretty much get too big. These are your garamis, your bigger garamis, um, rainbow fish, silver dollars, stuff like that we wanna steer away from. Uh, same thing with these barbs. These guys are going to be a little too aggressive for a tank that's small, and that could lead to territory issues and fighting, so we want to stay away from those guys as well. Um, but back to those mollies and platies. These guys are just super easy beginner fish. They're very low maintenance. They're very forgiving with water parameters, and they only get a couple inches big. Now, these bala sharks and garamis down here are going to be best suited for a larger tank, so not those today. Schooling fish are also great. Some of these smaller tetras would do awesome in a tank this size. Same thing with these guppies. Super small, super colorful, and pretty inexpensive. These dwarf garamis would be great as a centerpiece fish in a tank this size. You just have to make sure to get the dwarf garamis. And here we are for some more tetras. And of course, last but not least, stuff we can definitely not keep in this tank is cichlids. These guys will get way too big. And this is truly a nano aquarium for smaller fish. And we are back. I went ahead and picked up, I believe, three different types of fish. I also got some more plants, um, just a little bit of plant to, you know, float on the surface. You'll see that in a hot second. But for the main focal point of this tank, I went with the easy to care for fish. They're super hardy. They're very beginner friendly. They are white cloud minnows. I love these guys. And as you can see, here they are. These are the gold white cloud minnows. They're super colorful. They're super active. These guys can be jumpers at some time, so we're gonna have to make sure they don't jump out of the tank. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Regardless though, white cloud mountain minnows, they are very, very temperature tolerant, which is why I went with them for this tank. This tank doesn't have a heater. However, because my house is so warm, it stays around 74, 75, which is absolutely perfect for these guys. The next fish I went with are these little orange Cory catfish. Um, it's hard for you to see them right now. They are orange and green. They're super cool. I haven't really seen this color variety of these guys before. So I thought I definitely wanted to give them a try. Um, I went ahead and got three of them. These guys are also super hardy bottom feeders. I think they're really gonna like the 3D background because there's a lot of caves and spots they can hide and Cory's love that. Also in the tank already, I have an albino Cory catfish which came out of my 36 gallon tank when it started leaking and I had to move all the fish around. So technically that albino Cory cat is the first fish in the tank and these three Corys will join him shortly. And then because this is a small tank, we don't wanna overstock it. The last fish I got is this little albino bristlenose pleco. You really can't see him, but he's small. Um, perfect size for this tank and do a great job of eating some of that diatom algae that um, otherwise builds up and just looks ugly. But without further ado, we need to get all this stuff acclimating, so let's go check out the tank. Here is the quick little update on that tank. It's doing really good. These bubbles on the glass are because the water level is actually um, evaporated a little bit. Uh, as you can see on the filter in the back, the spray bar really isn't doing too hot. We have a lot of uneven flow going on right now, but I will fix that once we fill the tank back up because it just evaporates so fast with no lid. As an update though, the plants are all doing good. There is that little albino I know Cory catfish that's gonna get some friends very, very soon. So without further ado, we're just gonna start floating these guys in here. We have the Corys, we have the little Pleco, and then last but not least, hopefully this doesn't make the tank overflow. Oh, we're getting close, but we're not. Oh, do you see that? Now that's a rimless tank. No water line, just doing great. Anyways, so we're just gonna let these guys flow. I really think the gold white cloud minnows are gonna look awesome here, contrasting with the black background and the dark plants. Um, I think it's really gonna look good. But we're just gonna let these guys flow. I will be back in about 15 minutes when we can release everything 
into the new aquarium. A little longer than a few minutes later. We are all ready to go. I think first I'm gonna do the pleco, so I'm gonna grab this guy out, just like that. And this is hard to do with one hand, but we're just gonna try to pour him right on in. Now the reason I went with the bristlenose pleco instead of a standard pleco, obviously as you know, a standard pleco would get way too big for this aquarium. So that's why I went with the bristlenose. And there he is. Next up we're gonna do these three orange corys. I really don't know the exact name of these guys, but they look super cool, so I got them anyways. Same thing with the bristle nose. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Now, generally, I wouldn't recommend putting pet store water or other aquarium water into your tank. However, I'm not too concerned with this aquarium. I've done this before in the past. I trust this water. We should be all good to go. There's one of the quarries chilling on the background. As you can see, they're all kind of finding each other, and they should do really good in here, I'm hoping. But we'll give a final update on them once the tank is all cleaned back up. It probably looks like a mess right now, obviously. But Last but not least, we have the white clouds and that plant, which I believe, I don't even know what that plant's called to be honest with you. I thought I did, but I don't. But now to start, I'm just gonna take that plant and I kind of just wanna drape it across the top of the aquarium. I'm not quite sure how good it's gonna look. Um, I think if it were to attach to the background or even just be near the background, it would look cool. Um, I might reposition it, but for now, I'm thinking of just letting it float. But of course, I'm getting good at doing this with one hand, actually. We're gonna do the white cloud mountain minnows. Okay, not as good as I thought it was, not that smooth. But in go all of those guys. There is nine of them, to be exact. And there they go. One eternity later. And just like that, it is the next day for me, and all the fish are doing really good. We had no jumpers, everyone is thriving. Now overall, I think the tank turned out really, really well. As you can see, the fish are super active and are really doing good in here. One thing I do notice about this aquarium is that it does have a buildup of micro bubbles all over the front glass. I believe it's due to the filter spray bar. It just splashes a lot. Well, it actually doesn't splash that much at all. But for some reason, a ton of these little tiny micro bubbles form all over the glass. I didn't mention that in the review of this tank, but that is something I wish I knew how to fix. Other than that though, the tank seems to be doing really well. As I mentioned earlier, plants are all happy and growing in nicely and all the fish are getting along great. So I think this tank is pretty much complete. We don't need to add any more fish. We're definitely stocked in on fish and I think it turned out really, really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me add fish to this tank. Finally, I know it was a long time coming. I had to wait for the tank to cycle and we finally made it happen. It did take a little longer than expected, but the tank is now thriving, cycled, and doing amazing. Regardless, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the Hyger 8 Gallon Aquarium, do not forget to leave those in the comments down below. And if you haven't checked out part one of this series, I would highly recommend you do that now. But thank you guys once again so much for watching, and good bye.